the torch well from Philip Dees and Josh Booty as the third celebrated quarterback in this young program's history in Berlin is off to another super performance. He's wrapping up his senior season in style. 59 game winning streak is at stake right here looking for number 60 in a state title. They have 48 points per game. The trigger man is number seven Brock Berlin. He's going to leave this school with a lot of national passing records close to 14,000 career passing yards. He's taking his act to the Florida Gators next year and you're going to see a lot of Brock Berlin. Of course, the Eagles moved up from Class 3A after winning three straight titles in Class 3A. This is their first year in 5A. There's been a lot of talk about the best team in the state. When the Eagles moved up, a lot of folks think they would end up here in the Superdome. That's going to be the case here today. West Monroe has won three straight state championships. Someone's going to win number four today. We'll find out who it is right around the corner as we've got our kickoff of this Class 5A matchup between West Monroe and Evangel coming up right after this. It's the 5A state championship. The Eagles and the Rebels, are you ready to rumble? This is it. A lot of anticipation coming up to this moment with these two teams meeting. A lot of speculation it would end up here in the Superdome when Evangel moved up from 3A to 5A. These two teams each with its own recent rich history and bragging rights of three state championships will decide the 5A title here tonight. Evangel with the opening kickoff will put it in play just beyond its 25 yard line after that 25-yard kickoff return. And Brock Berlin to lead this prolific Evangel offense. Berlin almost 4,000 yards. There's a look at the senior. This season, he will be going to Florida next year. Expect him to run Steve Spurrier's offense one day. Berlin, and they patent it deep shotgun for the Eagles. Sets up the screen with a flag on the play. That flare out pass will net seven yards. That was Eddie Smith coming out of the backfield. Motion against the Eagles. Some early game jitters here, possibly, Renee. Yes, and uh, this is an, as anticipated as the Millennium. Boy, I tell you what, these are two powerhouses. This is like the Super Bowl here. And, uh, you know, both these teams are highly ranked around the country. Evangel may be the number go. one team oh, in the nation. On the offense, well, one, five yards. One poll down. has them number one, the Fox poll. USA Today has them number two. Our understanding is the people from Fox are here ready to present a national championship trophy to Evangel should they win. And the Eagles need to take an early timeout in this one. Well, we're 29 seconds into this 5A state final and this crowd, a majority crowd of West Monroe Rebels over the smaller Evangel Christian Academy crowd. 
roars its approval. We look at Coach Denny Dunn and his staff who do an outstanding job with Evangel. Their uh, offense producing 48. Don Schaus, the headmaster at West Monroe, but Evangel producing 48 points offensively and giving up 12 points on defense, where West Monroe only giving up 13 on defense, and they're a high-powered offense as well, 34. So uh, you got to you you look at the makings of a very high-octane performance here this evening. West Monroe going for its fourth straight title, a win back in 96 over Karen Crow. That was a great game, 24-21. And then the next year, an even better game, a 22-19 win over Shaw. And then last year's 32-14 win over Ruston. That game was much closer than the score indicated. Evangel also going for its fourth straight. All three of those previous wins in Class 3A. So it'll be first and 15 for the Eagles. As Berlin will drop into the shotgun. You know, he's completed 65% of his passes for his career. You know, you talk about the passing. I don't think the center completes that many passes from his exchange from, from center to quarterback. Berlin dumps out. That's Smith with the ball. And that's a three-yard loss. Fullback Eddie Smith unable to bring that one in. And Glenn Trell Ware, who we spoke about in the pregame, he is all over the field. He's a Sam linebacker, a junior, with 116 stops on the game on the uh, season, and he's going to be mirroring a lot of the action for Evangel. Eddie Smith, a, a big, big target at 6'2", 220, has been the uh, primary foot soldier, if you will, through the playoffs for Evangel. Let's see Evangel offense going backwards to begin this contest. Shuffle pass on the inside being strung out well by the tough West Monroe defense. Philip Gigger, nowhere to go. The split end tracked down by Derek Fleming. Five-yard loss this time. So a five-yard penalty, a three-yard loss, and now a five-yard loss. You see Gigger just taking it in, <clears throat> and he has a host of red jerseys. Among them, Luke Jackson. Derek Fleming and a host of other Rebels. He draws a lot of attention. Third down, Gerald. Third and 22, Renee, to be exact. By himself, Berlin throws in a vicious hit. But a reception is made. Nemai Rogers with the catch. Guess who? Your boy, Glenn Trell Ware. With emphasis. You know, he flows. You know, this, this athlete, only certain athletes that you can say that about. He gets in, in a, to a flow and he glides and he finds the ball. Outstanding quickness, perhaps a 4-5, four, 4-6 four, guy with great anticipation. Boy, he unloads. And you know, we talked about in pregame how he's being compared favorably to a Brady James who was Mr. Louisiana football in 1998. Now toils for the Tigers of LSU. Lentro Ware, just a junior. He will be special next season. Good timing as well on that hit. Chris Stegall's punt gathered in at the 47. Look out. Plenty of room. Cutting back just inside the 20-yard line. That's Jarrell Johnson. A 33-yard return for Johnson. And a 33-yard punt. And you'll see now the high-octane Western Monroe offense come on the field as Evangel couldn't do much with his, which is a rare occurrence where anybody holds them in check. Of course, it's one series, but West Monroe starting this series deep inside the 20-yard line of the Eagles. Kilcher, the quarterback, pitching the ball out. There'll be a loss on the play for the Rebels. That was Demario Taylor. Three-yard loss on the play. 
Both defenses coming out inspired in this one. Not for the faint of heart. Watch Satterweight sell out. He's coming up right here, and he is going to take a shot. He's going to cut off the outside, and scraping up is John Backman, uh, and also with some help from Philip Maxwell. Philip Maxwell, they feel, may be the best linebacker to come through this school in quite a while. Pilcher keeps, cuts it in at the 10, smells the end zone, in for the score. Chad Pilcher. 23-yard touchdown run on the option. Outstanding. And the Red Rebels of West Monroe draw first blood in this 5A clash of the Titans. Look at this cutback. Good decision by Pilcher. Last year, he was defensive back in the Superdome Classic right here. Runs to the end zone. Outstanding effort by Chad Pilcher, a 5'10", 185 senior. Extra point attempt by Lee Deal is up and good. Well, a good special teams play by West Monroe, and it's capped off by Pilcher's touchdown run from 23 yards out, coming right at you. He cut back on Giger, and he froze Satterthwaite with that dive play. And here we go as West Monroe is first to draw blood here in this classic confrontation between two heavyweights. This is a heavyweight boxing match, Gerald, not for the faint of heart. This is two schools that have been destined to play one another in a game of this magnitude. Well, we mentioned that there's been a lot of speculation about this game. These two schools not necessarily liking each other, both from the northern part of the state of Louisiana. They've become somewhat of a natural rival. Evangel in District 1, West Monroe in District 2, so they don't meet during the regular season. But I'll bet you, as long as they're in the classification of 5A together, they'll collide more times than not at some point during the playoffs. This year, seeded one and two, West Monroe actually got the top seed. Evangel seeded second. And the two teams made it through the brackets here for the Superdome for this final. Good look at Dennis Dunn, <clears throat> the mastermind for this, this Evangel program, and had a chance to choke with uh, Denny Duran, the headmaster, the real headmaster of the school, and what a gentleman he is, and class, class outfits both Evangel and West Monroe. Don Schaus runs an outstanding outfit for the Rebels. Geiger on the kickoff return will cut it back. It's a good return. 21-yard return will give Evangel the ball at its own 35. You know, Giger has 35 career interceptions as defensive back. <clears throat> he runs the, you know, outstanding as far as run back kicks. Uh, he doesn't leave the field very often, catches passes. They said if they ever gave a Heisman Trophy for the best athlete to ever come down the halls of Evangel, it would go to number 21. He's that well-respected to go along with a 3.5 grade point average. Here's a big reason Evangel won last week against Catholic. His kickoff return for a touchdown helped sway the momentum in that one. Inside handoff, tough running on the inside for Nemai Rogers. Just not a lot there. A lot of red jerseys collapsing around the senior fullback. You know, they go to, to a spread formation sometimes, and Eddie Smith and Nemai Rogers will go out to wideouts, but they do carry the mail quite a bit. Nemai Rogers outstanding thus far uh, running the ball and and uh, I tell you what you'll see him and Eddie Smith they've gone more to a ground attack thus far this year Berlin retreats rolls and fires into double coverage and what a catch is made there by Justin Hermes the senior split in hauls that one in around three West Monroe Rebels and gives Evangel a first down, down at the Rebel 49-yard line. And he just has a curl, and Hermes runs routes expertly. He's a lot in the same mold of, of an Abram Booty. Uh, look at this, just passes this ball. Very little effort, and Hermes, a Kentucky commitment. 4-7, 6-1, big frame, catches it in the crowd. Big first down for the Eagles. 17-yard pickup. Berlin. Retreats, airs it out, and airs it out too much. Looking for Thomas Bachman down the field, well overthrown. It'll.
be second down. <clears throat> you know, Evangel is, at one time was thought to be one-dimensional. Of course, they probably were more leaning to the pass, but they're, in the playoffs especially, Gerald, they've gone more with, with the running of Eddie Smith. With, and he has 543 yards on the season. Nemi Rogers with over, over 1,000. So they pick up some yards any way they can beat you. And I tell you, their offense has become very multi-dimensional, especially in a lot of part of the year. The run game would won the game for him in the semifinals against Catholic Berlin. Didn't have a touchdown pass in the game first time in his career. Also beat Aaron with the run. Eddie Smith, an outstanding effort, over 100 yards. Berlin sprints out, sets up, releases, complete on the play. Coming back for that ball was Bachman after he was overthrown on the previous play. And he'll be shy of a first down after it's a pickup of nine yards. Bachman with 44 grabs, nine going for touchdowns, 893 yards. Average it out, that's over 20 yards per grab. He's only a sophomore, Gerald. He's got four or five speed, and he can be one of the best before he leaves. Probably the best route runner, very fluid. Uh, against Washita, he was a hero in that game with nine snared passes, one going for a touchdown. Third and less than a yard. Single back is Rodgers behind Berlin, who will go under center. Rodgers with the call, first down. Over the right-hand side. This is almost like a home game for West Monroe, the fans from West Monroe. A true 5A enrollment and Evangel, a lower classification enrollment, even though they're playing up in 5A. Greater number of fans here from West Monroe. Well, West Monroe probably brought everybody but the barbershop with him, and they got 15,000 fans in attendance. Uh, <clears throat> this is, and, and, and probably throwing another five or 10,000 local fans, and you have a packed house here. Haven't seen this many uh, fans at a high school game in quite some time. Rodgers takes the snap as the up back and will plow ahead inside the 30. And he'll be close to another first down. You know, the thing that impresses you about Rodgers is the first hit never takes him down. Pound for pound, Gerald, he is the strongest member of this team. Bench pressing 365, squat 600. He's got the lower leg strength, so you're not going to knock him off his balance. And he just follows the lead of the guards, cutting off the block of Brett Smith. Good fake. Berlin carried it out, suckering one of the West Monroe defensive linemen to about five yards away from him. I tell you, Evangel is the first time I've seen him play since the opening game of the year. Their, their sets are more conventional than they opened the season with against Curtis. Berlin looks downfield for Bachman. Couldn't come down with that one. Incomplete. They tend to spread their offensive linemen out earlier this year when they were in the dome against Curtis, but here tonight, it's more of a conventional setup, as conventional as a shotgun and four wide receivers can be. I was talking about Bachman before, how good he can be and how good he is, and one of the biggest compliments I can, he, I've heard about the young man is he is being favorably compared <clears throat> to a guy who had a great career with Denny Duran at Louisiana Tech and went up to the Cardinals, Pat Tilly. Very much like him. They said he could be as good as Pat Tilly. Wow, what a compliment. Berlin on second and 10. Well protected. Throws. Bachman's open and makes the catch. Over one West Monroe defender. Derek Fleming was there and Ron McBeth tattooed him to knock him out of bounds, but that was an 18 yard reception from he, Berlin to Bachman. He threw out that zone coverage, and, he, and what a touch pass. Don't know if we'll see that again, but, Gerald, watch this. This is a very difficult out pattern, and watch, he had a loft it over the outstretched hands of the defender. I, I mean, I can't tell you how tough a throw that is. He got the foot down in bounds despite being knocked out of bounds as well. Another look at it. What wow. a tough throw. First and goal. Berlin retreats for the end zone, overthrows his intended target, Eddie Smith. Rebels on top of the Eagles, 7-0 with 5.40 left here in the first quarter, but Evangel on the move. And Zach McVeigh was applying coverage there to uh, Eddie Smith. And Zach McVeigh, just a junior, may be the best defensive back to come through the system in quite a while, has all the tools to be a great one, has five interceptions to his credit 
Check the blue chip list next year. We'll be on it. And Evangel wants to call a timeout. They're second of the game. And they'd like to talk about it as they face a second and goal from the nine-yard line. 540 left in the first quarter. West Monroe on top in this 5A state championship game here at the Gatorade Superdome Classic. Pulls in the last six years. A title in 93 in the 1A division, followed by one in 94. Both those wins against West St. John. Then in 3A, wins in 96, 97, and 98. Looking for that fourth title of the 90s. Fourth title of the 90s, and uh, well, that would be the fourth in a row, or their sixth Ooh. title of the 90s, <coughs> depending on how you add. You're looking at the next uh, quarterback here, Brett Rawls, 6'5", 180-pounder, number 15. He'll be the heir apparent, if you will, to Brock Berlin. And they've got another booty waiting in the wings as well. Yes. Eighth, Evangel. Eighth grade. John David Booty. Second and goal. Berlin beneath center. Fakes the handoff. Rolls. Tosses complete. At the end zone. In for the touchdown. Talked about Brent Rawls, Renee. There he goes. He made it in on that play. And he'll draw the Eagles within one. That's his 35th touchdown toss of the season. And unbelievable. Give him 144 career touchdown passes. Brock Berlin ruling left. Throwing across the bow, a little touch on that pass, and Brett Rawls collects it, gathers it in into the end zone, and a late arrival by Corey Brazil can't keep him from breaking the plane and giving an opportunity to the Eagles to tie this game up. Doug Stiegel in for the extra point. The extra point is blocked. <laughs> Wow. Corey Brazil, number 41, blowing through to make that stop. A 10-play, 65-yard drive, but West Monroe hangs on to the lead. Brock Berlin rolling left. Good block right here. As pressure comes from Glentrell Ware. And contact made near the goal line by Zach McVeigh, but too late to keep him out of the end zone. So far, Berlin, 7 out of 10 for 47 yards, and that scoring toss is uh, 35th again of the season. And boy, I tell you what, what an outstanding performer he is. 34, 35 touchdowns, Gerald, 8 interceptions. Well, special teams playing a big role in this game early. Renee, for the Rebels, we saw a big punt return by West Monroe, set up their first touchdown, and here a blocked extra point. Maintains West Monroe's lead, albeit a slim one at 7-6. Let's take another look at that blocked extra point. He approaches the ball, coming in from the outside. Great block. Wow. That may loom large, Gerald. Corey Brazil with a big hand, a big pop to block that and swat it away. And Stiegel will kick the ball off. I think West Monroe's band and pep squad and dance team and cheerleaders numbers more than everybody that's in Evangel Academy. Short kickoff, looked like an onside attempt, and West Monroe will recover it. Jarrett Frost up there falls on it. There he is. And they'll have it first and ten. I think West Monroe probably should have just chartered a couple of flights down here for this game. Probably would have been easier to move the team and all the accompaniment. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm very impressed with the tight end for West Monroe, number 99. Andre Whitworth, 6'8", 290. Wow, what a target. Mitch Tucker on that carry. Check that Pilcher on the keeper. Pilcher's gained almost 600 yards coming into this contest. 13 touchdowns. He's also had a 67-yard run. There he is, number three. And he faced to the younger Banks, Mark Banks, younger brother of Tommy, who he himself has nine touchdowns. But uh, Pilcher 
putting up some big numbers, rushing 13 scores, 597 yards. Straight into the line. First back through. That's Mark Banks right there. Well, his brother had an outstanding game a few years ago, over 200 yards in being to have the game MVP. Wow, we're going on to a pretty solid career with the Tigers. He'll be back for his fi final season next year in Baton Rouge. Third down and five, and this is one of the West Monroe areas that they want to accomplish, keeping the ball away from the Evangel offense by maintaining possession. Incomplete pass. Pilcher knocked down. Justin McIntyre there to apply the pressure. Ball intended down the field for Brooks Greer. Watch number 70 come into your screen, straight up the middle. With the heat coming with the pressure and couldn't find his mark, so now it'll be a punting situation. The Rebels would have to relinquish the ball at the 412 mark with a one-point advantage. Mims Boyce in for the punt. You know, get off a pretty good one that Geiger will let hit. Now pick it up at the 18. Look out. Got to wrap that guy up quickly. 37-yard punt and a seven-yard return as Geiger brings it back up the field. One of the Rebels is shaken up on the field and will be attended to. You know, Philip Giger is, is one of the best in the land. He's the number one player on the number one team. So that would make him the best. I guess you could say that. The Louisiana High School Athletic Association thanking State Farm Insurance and its Louisiana State Farm agents. State Farm sponsors all state championship trophies and awards and all 23 sports of the LHSAA. The LHSAA also thanking the following Gatorade, the official thirst quencher and title sponsor of the Superdome Classic. Your local Southern Quality Ford dealer presenting sponsor of the Superdome Classic. Baden, the official game ball. Louisiana Coca-Cola Bottlers, title sponsor of the annual high school all-star games. Bank One, sponsor of the LHSAA All-State All-Academic Awards. Sports Care of Louisiana, the LH LHSAA's official health care network, providing trainers at all LHSAA events. Reebok, the official shoe of the LHSAA. Piccadilly Cafeteria is proud sponsor of the Piccadilly Cup, the LHSA All Sports Award, and Mushmack Photography, the official photographer of all LHSA events. First and ten for Evangel. Berlin from the shotgun. Rips it, Hermes, on the reception, five-yard pickup. <clears throat> Simple little curl route. Hermes with 49 grabs, 605 yards, 14.6 yards per. And uh, with that spread offense of Brock Berlin, it's virtually impossible he gets back so far for a sack. Doesn't have to suffer too many sacks, and damage has been done once the pass is complete. Second and four. Second and a long four. Berlin beneath center. Wants to give it to Rodgers. Rodgers will have the first down and more. Look out, did he lose the football? There's a scramble for it. A 10-yard pickup. It looks like Evangel will hang on to it. And getting up from the bottom of that stack, big number 63, Tori O'Neill, the guard. You know, not enough credit is given to that offensive front. You know, Brock Berlin doesn't get uh, much heat on him, and there's always holes open. Credit Griffin Smith, DeSoto O'Neill, and Grace, technicians up front. Not the largest offensive lineman, but very technically sound. Very unselfish. Berlin on first and ten. Hands it off, sweeping to the near side. Not much running space there. Looked like Eddie Smith. And it is. Ron Hummel making the stop. You know, Eddie Smith is an interesting story. He's played wide receiver and running back. He's really stepped into his own, play, especially during the playoffs, Gerald. Good cut right here. Uh, picks up a couple of tough yards, but the likes of uh, Syracuse, Auburn, Louisiana Tech, and McNeese, along with Northwest, are interested in his services. Big receiver, 4-7, running back as well, and 
Done an outstanding job with 543 yards rushing, nine touchdowns. Berlin from the shotgun. All by himself back there. Well protected and a misread on the route between Hermes and Berlin. That'll bring up third down. He would have been well shy of the first down anyway unless he could have picked up additional yardage after the catch. You know, the thing about Berlin is not only his physical skills, Gerald, he's very, very, he's the hardest working quarterback they've ever had there. You look at the likes of, of the booties and, and uh, Philip Dees, he's the hardest worker. Checks off, can't get rattled. He's way ahead of his time, and they feel like he may be the best to ever come out of the that area of Louisiana. Berlin lets it ride straight over the middle and complete to Rawls. 12-yard pickup. Lentrell Ware making the stop. But Rawls, who had the touchdown earlier, picks up the reception there. You know, Rawls is not just a big target. They had to find a way to get him on the field. Uh, he is 6'5", 180. He's a, a pitcher, maybe a college prospect, Gerald. He brings the heat 95 miles per hour fastball. Got about a vertical jump of 33 inches. Uh, he's just one of the best players. Had to find a way to get him on the field. Brock Berlin was there. He's biding his time at wide receiver until next season. First and 10. Berlin beneath center. Rodgers on the carry. Fights forward. Ball's loose. West Monroe all over it. Let's see. Nope, they'll say he was down by contact. Five-yard pickup on the play. Mims Boyce there with the boisterous tackle of Nemi Rodgers. Here's another look at it. And Brazil with the stop. He's got 79 stops to his credit and brought the difficult Nemi Rogers. Wow. That was a close call. That was a fumble. Nothing close about it. It was a wrong call. Berlin drops, tosses, complete. In the flat, maneuvering over there is Rodgers. And the speedy back will gain 12 before Derek Fleming hauls him down. As we're closing in on the winning moments of the first quarter, Brock Berlin rolling right, facing Glentrell Ware with the heat. Nemi Rodgers cutting back. Great tackle over there by Derek Fleming, as you mentioned. 81 stops on the season coming into this game. Very active cornerback. Rodgers in motion. Toss sweep on the right-hand side. And Eddie Smith will pick up positive yardage. This running game of Evangel has been a big reason that they've had success this year, Renee. Rodgers, the first 1,000-yard rusher in a season for Evangel Academy. He accomplished it this year. And right behind him is Eddie Smith, and Eddie Smith gives a little different dimension. He's a little bit of a power runner. Rodgers with a shake and bake and zig and zag, and so they've really teamed up to give a little added dimension to the offense of Evangel. And, you know, it was again, it was one-dimensional, but I tell you, that running game has really, really solidified things. That'll be the final play of the first quarter. This one's lived up to its pregame hype. West Monroe in front of Evangel, 7-6, the early score here in this 5A state final at the Louisiana Superdome. Second down for Evangel. Brock Berlin, 77 yards through the air thus far. He'll have a traditional running set behind him with a slot back and split backs behind him. Rodgers with the carry. 
the charge forward and will be close to the first down. Looks like he has it. Outstanding blocks on the up front, Tori O'Neill and Justin Grace on the left side. Good look right there, Tori O'Neill, number 63. 5'11", 250, a three-year starter. Good surge off the ball and gives an opportunity to continue the drive with a, attaining a first down at the 11.52 mark here in this second quarter. Philip Brock. Boy, he's got a, quite a future ahead, ahead of him. Good look at Brock Berlin. And he'll fumble a snap. Ball's loose. Still loose. Wes Monroe's going to recover it. Well, Berlin tried to pick it up instead of falling on it. And coming up with it instead is Darren Smith, the defensive tackle. Only a sophomore, but a big boy, 6'0", 230. And his acceleration right there helped the Rebels come up with the turnover. And credit the pursuit, just the, uh, you know, when you hustle, good things happen. And, well, I tell you what, the defense from West Monroe was just all over the place. Back there, you see a number of jerseys. J.R. Hayden was back there, Mims Boyce, and as you mentioned, only one player came up with it, but kind of snuffs out a drive that the Eagles were having prior to that play. Back to live action on first down, a nominal pickup for the Rebels. Pickup of about three, it'll be second down. Pilcher two rushes for 24 yards in the first quarter. Rodgers, 5 of 31 for Evangel. Berlin, 10 of 14 for 77 yards. Pilcher only attempted one pass. West Monroe only holding the ball for 2 minutes, 17 seconds. Evangel, over 9 minutes. But it's West Monroe with the one-point lead. Pilcher on the cutback, spinning, first down and more. Up to the 42-yard line. A 12-yard run for Chad Pilcher. And Pilcher is that leader talking to Don Shaw's right there. Very cerebral guy, 4.0 GPA, 32 ACT. And, you know, he might have an, a future, if not in football, may have a future in baseball as a third baseman. He has attracted the likes of LSU and Tulane, uh, and he's going to make someone an outstanding prospect. He is a competitor, hates to lose. Uh, he's got, he's the total package. He'll have two backs behind him. Fumble the ball, pick it up, and he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage. So some problems on the center to quarterback exchange for both squads as we approach the 10-minute mark here in the second quarter and West Monroe with a one-point lead. We look at Justin McIntyre right there. He'll be a blue chip performer next year as uh, Steve Lee, who just committed to the University of Texas. He may be the best of the best. 6'4", 320. Negotiates the 40 in a 4-9. Bench presses 400 pounds, squats 600. I tell you, he has all the tools to be a great one at the next level. Handoff. First back through is Mark Banks. He averages almost five yards a carry. Philip Maxwell there to uh, apply the brakes on that four-yard pickup. It'll be third down. And Banks runs well between the tackles. Hands off on a dive, and Pilcher carries it through, which attracts some attention. The Giger and Maxwell collaborate on that stop, and where Giger really comes up from his cornerback position, uh, he is he thrives on being the best he can possibly be. Very quiet, but he is has a great deal of drive and desire. Banks again will be just shy of the first down. Down to about the 49. You look at Satterthwaite right there. Tyler Satterthwaite being recruited by Oklahoma, Texas A&M, USL, and Louisiana Tech. He leads this team with 83 stops. Four of those are sacks, nine losses. And Denny Dunn right now is concerned, trilling by a point, a position he finds himself in rarely. The Rebels are going to go for it. You can see Pilcher asking for quiet. And with the majority of the fans here being West Monroe, he's going to get it. Pilcher? He won't get it. Well, he might have gotten it, but Evangel may have the ball. 
And they do. They come up with the ball. They hold on downs and come up with the ball. It was a bad exchange on the center to quarterback. So there's some problems with that snap count here still in the second quarter. Look at it. Yes. He... Banks was moving early. Pilcher wasn't ready for the snap, and away the ball went. Stephen Lee came crashing in with his 320-pound frame, wrapped it around Pilcher. Exchange was not smooth, and Banks really, really never did receive it. So Brock Berlin comes back on the field to lead his troops, and oh, I tell you what, he is everything he's made out to be, and probably the best football player in the country. Movement by Evangel, that'll cost him five. We've seen a lot of uncharacteristic mistakes out of both of these squads, both well coached, both disciplined, but a lot of jitters, and those butterflies haven't quite left the systems yet here, Renee, in the second quarter. Perhaps this is the biggest game for both of these teams. I don't think they've been in a bigger competition as there's a premature movement on the left side. You know, Brock Berlin, we talked about how good he is and how good he can be. Uh, all the coaches out in Shreveport area have seen the likes of Joe Ferguson, Terry Bradshaw, Josh Booty. He is further ahead, Brock Berlin is, at this stage than all those other quarterbacks. Now, will he be a Super Bowl quarterback like Terry Bradshaw? Don't know. But he can be as good as he wants to be. He's better than all those quarterbacks were on the senior level in high school. Berlin fakes the handoff, pitches back. Eddie Smith has a tough time running it over the left-hand side. Credit J.C. McKay, the strong safety with the stop. We look at Glentrell Ware there. Boy, I tell you, he's a heat-seeking missile. Very adept at ball handling by Brock Berlin as he pitches it back to Eddie Smith. Skirts around the left side. Good stride. Boy, he'll get better. You know, he may red shirt next year because he's only been playing football a couple of years, but he will get better, stronger, and bigger, and he'll make someone an outstanding prospect where he makes his decision. Second and 13. Berlin releases, complete, but Smith is hit immediately. He may have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage. Corey Brazil there with the stop. Two yard gain and it will be third and 11. Derek Fleming with the assist and there's gonna be a long situation for Brock Berlin as he drops back, dials number nine and arrives the same time as the ball as Corey Brazil putting a wrap around the ball carrier. You know, he missed five games with a appendicitis attack, and, but he will knock your head off as shown. He's got tremendous cover and tremendous closing speed. This play whistle did as Berlin hits the ground and a flag comes out. You know, it looked like the West Monroe Guys that were coming in under a full hit of steam yeah. were trying to hold up there. I don't know about this call. Berlin ended up on the seat of his pants. It did appear that the West Monroe players tried to hold back. And contact was imminent. Let's see. And Chow's getting the explanation. He's got a mean look on his face when he does that, huh? Both the calls against. As you can see, Brock Berlin right here holds up. Well, the and Wintel, Wintel Ware, just uh, Glentrell Ware, just just bumped him. And tried to hold up. In fact, well, I it looked like the second bump by Liso Jones. Get ball foul. Push the foul on the defense. So both are dead ball fouls. The personal foul being marched off. 
That'll bring the ball all the way down to the 43. Here's another look at it. You can see 98 is the guy that sends him down right there. Well, I would have to say that... I'm not sure that maybe. Berlin did a little bit of a... You know how the punters are sometimes brushed and well, go right hmm. down? If it works... If Berlin was having to go down there. All fair, you know. Love and war. Third down in less than a yard. Hand off, Smith first down, down to the 33. 12-yard pickup. Gaping hole, and you know, Brock Berlin is freezing that defense with his play action type uh, ball handling and just play faking and coming to unload on him. Ron Macbeth came up in, from his free safety position and made this stop. But, you know, Eddie Smith with another first down, and Evangelos methodically moving down the field, 6-11 and counting here in the second stanza. And West Monroe with a one-point advantage. Evangel has not led in this game. Berlin drops, rolls under pressure, now releases. Smith had it, then dropped it. They'll say incomplete. Tried to run before he had the handle on the ball. That'll bring up second down. Corey, Corey Brazil there was trying to pick up the ball, but it was already whistled dead, Renee. Both teams are no strangers to the Superdome or this type of game, so that's also definitely an advantage. You tell you what, he I don't know if control. he did. Yeah. yeah, he didn't quite have control. He bobbled it for a second and lost control of it incomplete. But, you know, Don Shahouse, what a gentleman he and Dennis Dunn both are, and besides his football coaching expertise, he also is a on a couple of TV shows up in Monroe. Pass complete to Rodgers. He'll get inside the 20, down to the 18. That'll move the chains. 12-yard pickup there. Yeah, both these teams have radio crews that follow them around from game to game, and it's almost like a mini college experience. Yeah, they'll call them, they have people, many people are refer to them as University of Evangel, University of West Monroe, and this is like the uh, Sugar Bowl, perhaps. <laughs> Two outstanding teams. I don't think the Sugar Bowl could be more hyped than this. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll guarantee you this will be a better game than the Saints-Rams tomorrow. Motion along the line, no flag. Smith will carry over the right side. There's a flag. A hold. Possibly motion. It's against Evangel. Their third infraction of the game. Hold it. the up. And you're right, Renee. A hold. You know, Brock Berlin gets a lot of his. Uh, the acorn don't fall far from the tree. Is Dad is a defensive line coach. His mom is the top sales representative for Mary Kay. He has that burning desire to excel. He's very goal-oriented. Studies a lot of game film off the field. Who does that remind you of? Peyton Manning. You know, the coaches at Tennessee and the coaches for the Colts have said that he spends as much time in the film room as the coaches do. And, and uh, Brock Berlin takes a page from Peyton Manning's uh, approach to the game, and he refuses to lose. Very tough mentally, always focused. First and 19, Berlin in the pocket, well protected, lets it ride, and it'll be intercepted, but out of bounds. Coming down with the ball there, Ron McBeth, the strong safety, but well beyond the out of bounds strike. Well, McBeth, that would have been interception number five on the season. He roams around, played at, uh, at West Monroe, plays a dual free safety role. They, they use him in different responsibilities. Sometimes they'll come up and play sort of like a monster back, but uh, Macbeth. The bell toll for an incomplete pass. Second and 19. West Monroe showing blitz. They're in coverage. Berlin. Overthrows his intended receiver. He had some heat that time coming up from Keith Thompson. 
Well, you don't get to Brock Berlin very often, and Keith Thompson brought the heat from the outside from his linebacker position. And uh, he's going to call for a third and 19 now, and we'll see what Mr. Berlin and company have in store for West Monroe. Checks his pass. Boy, I tell you what, he's got more notes on his arms than the surgeon. 35 touchdowns on the year. Only eight interceptions. A quarterback efficiency rating of 159. Berlin sets up the middle screen to Rodgers incomplete. It'll be fourth down. That pass was intended. It was being set up as a screen and may have gone somewhere, but Rodgers couldn't find a handle. You know, he's... Going to make someone a pretty good catch himself. Kansas State, Northeast Louisiana, Louisiana Tech are interested in his services. And it's interesting what the call will be here as uh, looks like the Mr. Berlin may go for it. Yeah, Doug Stiegel, the field goal kicker, his long kick of the year, 41 yards, 8 of 8 from field goal range. This would be a 45-yarder. So he hasn't missed yet this year, but his long is 41. So they're going to go for it on 4th and 19. Berlin drops back, feeling the pressure. Rolls, looks towards the end zone, and Rodgers, and he got it! No! Incomplete, they'll say. Wow, I thought he came down with that ball. Would have been a tough acrobatic catch, but Nemai Rodgers stretched his 5-7 frame as far as it would go, and coming up with a big play is J.C. McKay, and well, I tell you what, he's pretty happy with himself right now as Evangel must relinquish the ball now with the 440 mark in the second quarter and still West Monroe with a one-point advantage. Tough catch. He was going the other way, and Ooh. that collision is what knocked it loose. Had it yeah, he been... did catch it. It was, that, uh, it was that hit. Back to live action on the first down play for the Rebels. That was Banks with the run. Another look at it. He got there just a second. He was bobbling the ball, but he put his helmet, had... Nemai Rogers maybe not turned that way. Of course, it's easy to say, but the ball brought him, momentum brought him that way. Perhaps he may have protected the ball with his back, but McKay made a tremendous collision that uh, squirted the ball loose. Banks on the inside. He'll be close to a first down. Now, West Monroe's got all three of its timeouts, Renee, as we come down to the four-minute spot on the clock. Rebels lead this one, 7-6. West Monroe, the 12th straight team from the Monroe area to compete for a title here in the Superdome. You know, keep in mind, Evangel, or West Monroe, rather, is doing well without the services of senior tailback Tremissian Davis. 100, uh, make that 1,081 yards, 11 touchdowns, a 9.4 yard per carry. What a production level of doing without. I mean, that's quite a chunk of yards to be uh, minus that type of ability. Banks will pick up four and the first down. Down to the 38. Banks with a drive and good leg drive as well as he carries a pair of Evangel players. Uh, John Bachman among those. He's a linebacker and was an offensive lineman, all city offensive lineman, John Bachman in 1998. Pilcher wants to throw, looks deep, has a receiver who's open, but overshoots Brooks Greer. Greer got some separation from the defensive back, but a little too much air beneath it. And it'll be second down. Brooks Greer looking to make catch number 34 as Pilcher just put too much under his descent. And he had beaten Ahmad Lewis, cornerback on, on the coverage, but it falls incomplete, stopping the clock at the 309 mark. Second and 10 for the Rebels. Pilcher on the keeper. He'll struggle forward and he'll be wrapped up shy of the first down, but he'll pick up about eight, make it seven. And West Monroe will continue to let the clock spin inside of three minutes. See if they can pick up this first down here before they start stopping the clock. Good look at Giger just now. 41 Saturday, but 21 Philip Giger, you see him in the background. 
You know, he, as a, he's a four-year All-State performer, 39-inch vertical jump. As a sophomore, I remember Coach Dennis Dunn telling me, you'll see that young man playing on Sunday afternoons one day, and I tell you what, I, it looks like he, they fulfill that promise. Thanks, straight ahead. Looks like he's got the first down. First man to tell you so is Ben Sonye, the tackle. Sonye is, boy, good looking Andre Whitworth right there. Wow. 6 8, 290 of him, tight end, and Banks comes crashing in. Steve Lee comes crashing in from the outside. He can dominate, he annihilates that offensive line. Uh, he has 13 solo, 13 uh, solos behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, it's unbelievable what, how active he is for a big man. 6'4", 320 pounds. It is a first down. And yes, this is a good game. It's really living up to all the hype. Defensive struggle here early. Some mistakes by both teams, but Let's face it, these are two teams really getting after it down on the field. The Vans are giving up over 15 points per game. West Monroe 13. Pilcher under pressure, knocked down and sacked. Good play by Wyatt Adams, the outside linebacker coming up on the blitz to haul down Pilcher and put a crimp in this offensive drive. Wyatt Adams plays that strong safety position, outside linebacker, monster, whatever it is. He comes from the outside on a blitz. And uh, he does what he's intended to do. He's very tough, mentally tough, very aggressive, flies around the ball. They use him in a number of ways. Both he and John Bachman, both strong safeties, can uh, double as a monster outside linebacker. Pilcher, counter, other way, big hole, look out. That's Demario Taylor, 5'6", 148-pound sophomore, picking up 14 yards on the play. 259 yards on the season he's produced and four touchdowns very mentally tough not the biggest about a 4 6 5 40 but great uh, running style here he cuts on a dime and gives it everything he has good body lean for a running back reminds me a little of Kenny Robinson Renee you remember last year the 5 7 154 pound senior led West Monroe to the title last year this time, Taylor's carry is not as successful. He'll be stopped for a four-yard loss. Robinson last year, 21 carries, 201 yards and three touchdowns. Not a big man, but when he got outside, he moved it, and that's a little bit what Taylor reminds you of, a 5'6", 148 sophomore. Good tackle here by McBurn along with uh, Wyatt Adams and some jostling between McIntyre and Justin McIntyre and a couple of the West Monroe players. West Monroe will let the play clock wind down, content to accept the penalty as they drop back in a punting formation on fourth and eight. There's 20 seconds left here in this second quarter. And the Rebels will be assessed a five-yard penalty for delay of game. 7-6, West Monroe on top. Good look right there at White Adams, the senior, strong safety. Mims Boyce, back to kick for West Monroe. Brock Berlin and company will have a few snaps to go for the end zone. Boyce's punt, trying to kick away from Geiger, and that's a smart thing to do. He'll take a big rebel roll. Wow. Wow, that's about as close as you can get to the end zone without going in. 51-yard kick. Well, if Berlin and company are to pick up a score before halftime. They're going to have to go a ton of the way down the field to do it. Gee whiz, that ball just just inside the goal line. Keith Thompson with the down. And, uh, yeah, Brock Berlin is going to have to, you know, I, I don't see them do anything crazy here because uh, nine seconds, you're deep in your own territory. They can't afford to give up any big play that would go the other way and swing the momentum. They find themselves down by a single point and of course, want to go into the locker room and make some adjustments, talk about it a little bit, uh, but this is not a safe area at all. And you also want to remind your offensive linemen, do not hold in the end zone. You know one thing, he won't kneel down. 
Nope, but he will push it straight up the middle and pick up some positive yardage. That's a five-yard carry. That's just beef on beef there. Safe play. And that's how the first half will end. Well, tight one here. These two teams playing two years ago in a jamboree. That ended at a 14-all tie. Here we've got a 7-6 West Monroe lead over Evangel. Now we'll toss it down to the field for your halftime entertainment. second quarter somewhat in time of possession and demario taylor trying to fill in that void again uh, you mentioned tremission davis lacking with that production over 1,000 yards and 11 touchdowns off so good lsu is offered in spite of the injury so that's quite a sweep to the near side that's brooks greer Generally, the receiver who's caught 33 balls on the year for 652 yards and 11 touchdowns, but he can rush it too. That's an eight yard pickup, and it'll be third down and two for the Rebels. The 5'11 senior attracts a lot of attention from the defense. He draws a lot of attention, catches well in traffic, runs the reverse, as you've seen, and also draws some attention from the recruiters, as in the likes of Louisiana Tech, Northeast, Northwest, Louisiana, and SMU are among his suitors. And Brooks Greer with 33 grabs, 11 for touchdowns, will be a fine catch for anyone. Third and short, Pilcher to Banks. He's got the first down and more into the secondary. You can see Evangel going for that ball, trying to strip that ball, but that's a nine-yard pickup for Banks. There's a flag on the play. Could this be a face mask penalty tacked on to the end of this? Let's see. That would really bode well for West Monroe, and that's what it is. It is going against the Eagles, and are not, not a very happy Dennis Dunn right now, the sidelines, Don Shows. Take a look at him. Both gentlemen have a lot of respect. In fact, you know, I, I found out before the game, you could just tell that both uh, coaching staffs has a tremendous amount, the administrations have a tremendous amount of respect for one another. That's Evangel's fifth penalty for 40 yards. So Pilcher and company down at the Eagle 24-yard line. They'll have it first and 10. Banks straight off tackle. He'll make it down to the 15, and the Evangel offensive line blowing off the ball here in the third quarter. Eight-yard pick up there. Appears that West Monroe is a little more physical up front, uh, at least from the early going here. And the likes of Landon William, Landon Fleming, Lance Wright, Hamilton, Simon, and Sonia are just doing an outstanding job along with that ma mammoth tight end, Andre Whitworth, all 6'8", 290 of him. is really blowing some big holes in the defense of Evangel. Pilcher follows Banks. It'll be a nominal pickup, but should be enough for a first down. Three-yard carry. You don't know if we have a shot at number 99. He's a tight end. Uh, 
what a mammoth size he is, 6'8", 290. You know, he's just a junior, and he's got nine catches for 161 yards. He's unstoppable in the bas on a basketball court. There he is, number 99. And also, believe it or not, Gerald, as a pitcher, he can bring the heat as a sophomore 80-mile-an-hour fastball. I mean, he does it all. And Pilcher does it all as well, picking up the first down with great blocking up front. Good surge right there by Hank Hamilton. The center and company doing a good job up front against the Eagle defense. Andrew Whitworth, that tight end, will anchor the right side, and they'll run behind him in an outstanding stop that time of Demario Taylor. Philip Maxwell, bang, bang, Maxwell with that silver hammer. Comes up and drops it on Taylor. Well, he goes down. He gave a mini version of the slash. They won't, they won't find him five thousand dollars, but uh, he gave a little mini version of that. And boy, he brought on the heat. Philip Maxwell, uh, he is really. They think he may be the best linebacker. Leave here. Had an outstanding game as a freshman in the Superdome, and uh, he fills those gaps. Explodes. Runs real well. Six one two zero oh, five. Will be a blue chipper in year two thousand. Phil motion early you know Renee one's got to wonder as the way the playoffs fell Evangel despite being the second seed had to travel three consecutive weeks regional round to Washita it's his penalties against West Monroe quarterfinals to Eric and then last week the Baton Rouge to take on Catholic and this for all intents purposes they're the visiting team here but they are this is another bang there's Maxwell on the stop but this is another road game, a road game for both teams, but West Monroe on the road to Ruston last week at District Pro. They didn't have that far to go. At home in the quarterfinals and also at home in by district, they had to travel in the regional round to Napier Central. There you saw the uh, slash, mini slash. There's the pass into the end zone for the score. Brooks Greer with the touchdown from Pilcher. And West Monroe has increased its one-point lead. He ran a slant, did a good move on the corner, and did an outstanding job. The offense going 56 yards in seven plays. Final toss from Pilcher. His first completion of the game. And boy, what a big toss that was to Greer. On a slant, he beat Ahmad Lewis on the slanting. Giger couldn't get up quick enough for the touchdown. And Dennis, Dennis Dunn just looking on in amazement. This to make it an eight-point game. Extra point. Good. Lee deal is true. And the Rebels take a 14-6 lead over the Eagles. There's the hit by Maxwell again. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Ahmad Lewis was responsible for that. He turned it inside and made him go back inside and, and with Maxwell filling he made the big hit Whew. those guys aren't running running on on regular gas I can tell you that that's high, high octane they're just having some fun <laughs> that wow guy's, that guy's kind of young to have lost all his hair already huh it happens well, you don't have any of your hair but you're not so young well, we'll see what the Evangel offense has here to answer as West Monroe comes out right here with its initial possession of the second half and scores six points. Pilcher with the two-step drop and, and slams it, a quick hitter. That was a timing route, and that's tough to stop on a slant. Alex Averdis's kickoff is gathered in by Geiger, and he'll be whistled down. After a 14-yard return, and Brock Berlin and company will come out and try to answer that latest Rebel score. Ron Macbeth may be injured. That may be vital. Uh, as Giger did not his knee didn't touch. Wow. He. <laughs> to see his, the uh, frustration. Hand off Rogers. Not much running room on the inside. J.R. Hayden there for the stop. J.R. Hayden is the best up front. 5'10", 205, 94 stops for the Rebels and uh, does a great job. Really shoots the gap and runs very, very well and did a good job of filling right there. 
responsibilities. Look, as you see the linebacker coming up, he's filling a hole. Number 40, Mims Boyce. And he's just sl he's just sliding along looking for a gap and did a good job. Berlin's got an open man and makes the completion. All the way down at the 40-yard line, Thomas Bachman is there. You can see that one developing well. Excellent pass from Berlin. And Bachman right there to haul it in. Bachman may have injured his shoulder. He's favoring that left arm. Brock Berlin just dropping back. This is the run with Rodgers. And the tackle. That was a stop made earlier by J.R. Hayden. Let's look at Hayden right there to look at uh, Bachman. They have injured that shoulder. Berlin gives it to Rodgers. Bounces outside. He'll be lucky to make it back to the line of scrimmage. Lentrell Ware and company there to make that stop. While they came shooting from the outside, Michael Stevenson came blowing in from the outside and disrupted that entire play. And didn't give Rodgers anywhere any running lanes. And help came on the way in the form of the Calvary, and the defense just converged and stopped and snuffed it out. Second and 11, give him a, a yard loss on that play. Eddie Smith. And Berlin wants to call a timeout. Well, there's been some confusion on the Evangel offense tonight. 6.37 here in the third quarter, midway through the third quarter. Rebels on top of the Eagles by a 14-6 count as the Eagles are trying to pick up a touchdown on their initial offensive possession of the second half. Second down and 11. Berlin beneath center. He's got two backs behind him. He'll look to pass. Well protected. Complete. Hermes. First down. Down to the 22. A 19-yard pickup. You know, Justin Hermes, a three-year starter, has seen it all. And great grab right here. You know, he broke his collarbone. A good curl pattern right here. And broke his collarbone in 1998. Missed six games, came bouncing back for the championship. Uh, you know, and, and what a gutty performer he is and, and really overcame a lot of pain to get where he is and achieve the goals he has. Craig DeSoto to the center, only man on the, on the field that completes more passes than Brock Berlin. Rodgers, right side, nothing doing. Well, this Evangel squad coming back here as they're driving the ball right now against Wentz Monroe. The last five years, this team 69 and three on the field, Renee. Lisso Jones favoring that league as well. And, you know, both these records are at stake. In fact, Evangel with a 59 game winning streak at stake here. When Brock Berlin was a freshman, he vowed with his teammates to go 60 and 0 before he left here as a senior. And, they're, they're really close to accomplishing that feat with a win today. Berlin, Cox, fires complete on the play. That's Brent Rawls, and he'll get it down inside the five. It'll be a first and goal, but there is a flag on the play. Let's read it. Hold on. Uh-oh. Hold everything. Rawls now favoring his shoulder. Don't know if these are holding. Both against the Evangel. Well, we saw Bachman go out a moment ago. There's Rawls on the hit. He's at the sidelines right now being attended to. This number 15 slowly goes off the field. And he'll make his way to the bench. Might have had his shoulder pop out of joint. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a serious, but it, it does mean it's painful. It's happened before and painful injury. That's a sixth infraction against the Evangel, 60 yards. That one a costly one. It would have been first and goal inside the five. Well, Bachman has not returned. And now Rawls is out. Top receiver Hermes still in there for Berlin. Ahmad Lewis and Giger in as well. Another flag comes out. Not a delay of game, but let's see.
Dead ball foul. Offsides against Steve Angel. Well, very uncharacteristic of the Eagles at this point. Encroachment the call. They're going backwards here. They'll be faced now with a second and 27. Certainly not insurmountable for this offense as Brock Berlin gets behind center. Drops back in his traditionally deep shotgun. Berlin retreats. Flushed out of the pocket. Releases looking deep down the field. Barely overthrows. Ahmad Lewis is intended receiver. The flanker just couldn't come down with the ball. He had some separation, but could not come up with it. You know, Brock Berlin, if he hasn't reached it yet, close to 4,000 yards passing this season and close to 13,000 or 14,000, I'm sorry, on his career. What an outstanding performance he has uh, had here or for his career uh, through his four years, his three years following the departure of Philip Dees, who uh, went to North Carolina from uh, Evangeline since has gone to Louisiana Tech. But, uh, boy, he has tremendous touch on the ball, and that's a tough throw to make, and Ahmad Lewis just inches short of making that catch. Third and 27, and Russ Monroe defenders pin their ear backs. Here they come. Hermes with the reception, well shy of the first down, only a 10-yard pickup. So it'll be fourth and 17. Well, it would be a 47-yard field goal from here for Evangel. As we mentioned, Stiegel's long is 41 this year. You're really too close to punt. They may go for it on fourth down. As Berlin dials number one and comes up with a safety pass, Derek Fleming on the stop. Oh, look at a spiral on that, that pass. Great rotation. Great delivery by Brock Berlin as... Thomas Bachman re-enters the game. Berlin looks down the field. It's complete to Hermes, but he's going to be short of the first down. A 14-yard pickup. Ball will go over on downs. The West Monroe defense is held. That's a tremendous boost to the West Monroe defense that they could hold Evangel at bay here. And catch by Hermes, short of the goal, short of his goal of a first down. And now West Monroe's turn to eat up some clock as we approach the three and a half minute mark here in the third quarter. Thanks to Lone back behind Pilcher. Pilcher on the option will keep it, turn it up the field and bring it up to about the 23-yard line. I mentioned, Renee, the 1998 Jamboree game between these two teams, a game, of course, that didn't count. They actually played it at Louisiana Tech. 20,000 fans showed up for that 14-14 tie in a, a meaningless game. But this is obviously the people's choice, winning these two teams together. And I'm sure the attendance is a healthy one here today. We haven't seen any official numbers, but... It appears to be a very healthy attendance here today. Great faking by Pilcher and draws the defense in on the fake to Banks. Loose ball. Loose ball and Evangel has picked it up. Coming up with it is number 70, Justin McIntyre. Boy, Justin McIntyre, just a junior, 6'1", 285. He'll be back next year to be one of the better ones. Boy, he is, he has a nasty streak and always around the ball. Uh, made a great play just now and uh, gives Brock Berlin an opportunity deep in Rebel territory about the 20-yard line. Three minutes to go, three minutes and eight seconds to go here and plenty of time for Evangel to get a, get a drive moving. That's the third lost fumble of the game. Well, this is a golden opportunity to, for, for Evangel here, Renata. Get a little momentum as they trail by eight with 3.08 left in the third quarter. Berlin to Rodgers. You know, this is a different Evangel team to pass as they try to establish the run. We've always seen them throw first, run second. I'm not saying that that's not necessarily the case here, but they just seem to be wanting to establish a run more often. Well, they're multi-dimensional now, and 
again, a poor exchange from Pilcher to Banks, and he never really got it, and McIntyre did, and had not been for the Johnny on the spot of the Rebel offensive lineman, he would have been touchdown bound. Second and nine. Berlin will pass. He's all by himself in the backfield. Too hot for Hermes to handle. Good coverage that time by Derek Fleming from the cornerback spot. And Fleming really sticks on those receivers as evidenced by the coverage he just uh, applied just now to Justin Hermes. And boy, I tell you, Hermes will move on to Kentucky next year. He will be a great addition to that Wildcat attack. Coach Mummy is glad to get him into in the fold and up at the University of Kentucky. Third and nine. Bachman and Rawls are both back in. Berlin under pressure will roll. Look down the field. He's got his man. That's Rawls. Inside the 10, down to the eight. It's going to be a first down. Gee whiz, it's so hard to contain that Evangel offense when it's working. Boy, Brock Berlin just flushed out of the pocket, broke contain, rolled left. This is just great athleticism. You know, he's got number 98, Lisso Jones, pouring in from the outside. Just eludes this. Good block right there, a bump on Lucas Jackson, looking for Rawls. Not a, he threw across the bow, Gerald. That is a tough throw. It was tipped, but it was caught. And uh, I tell you what, it's good, it's good to be good, but it's better to be lucky. Brock Berlin finds out what a little noise is all about here in the Superdome. As this play will be whistled dead as there was some movement, some premature movement. Let's see. Motion against Evangel. Center not on the same page with the quarterback. As Coach Dunn with his stoic pose and, you know, neither one of these staffs or players can you rattle. They've seen it all and Coach Don Shiles has overcome some health and heart problems and we're glad to have him with us. Both these coaches, quite a credit to their profession. First and goal from the 14. Berlin rolls, tosses, incomplete. Too high for his intended receiver. That was Bachman. Just a little too tall as Brock Berlin rolled to his right. Play action fake right there and throws it out. Ah, kind of a tough, tough catch to make and just a little too tall for a five foot nine in sophomore Thomas Bachman. It'll be second and goal from the 14. More movement. No flags. Pass incomplete. Intended for Eddie Smith. Eddie Smith with 13 grabs for 284 yards. A, a touchdown to go along with it. He has really added a, a great dimension to this running attack since his emergence with the uh, his uh, rushing efforts. And Brock Berlin drops back looking for Eddie Smith. Big target. Stays in the pocket. Good delivery. Just couldn't find its mark. You know, Brock Berlin is such a good athlete. If he concentrated on baseball, they said he could be great. Maybe a high draft choice like a Josh Booty as a shortstop or a pitcher. Evangel's got to take another timeout. I, I tell you, I don't know what it is. They just don't look in sync tonight for whatever reason. Some confusion on the offensive play, and they'll take a timeout. They'll have one left, and we're still in the third quarter, 129 left here in this third quarter. Louisiana High School Athletic Association thanking State Farm Insurance and its Louisiana State Farm agents. State Farm sponsors all state championship trophies and awards and all 23 sports of the LHSAA. 
The LHSAA also thanking the following Gatorade, the official thirst quencher and title sponsor of the Superdome Classic, your local Southern quality Ford dealer. Presenting sponsor of the Superdome Classic, Baden, the official game ball, Louisiana Coca-Cola Bottlers, title sponsor of the annual high school all-star games. Bank One, sponsor of the LHSAA All-State All-Academic Awards. Sports Care of Louisiana, the LHSAA's official health care network, providing trainers at all LHSAA events. Reebok, the official shoe of the LHSAA. Piccadilly Cafeterias, proud sponsors of the Piccadilly Cup, the LHSA All Sports Award. Mush Mac Photography, the official photographer of all LHSA events. This all part of the LHSA State Farm Championship Network. Thank you to these companies for supporting high school athletics in Louisiana. Berlin, 17 of 30 for 179 yards. It'll be third and goal from the 14. He'll drop back in a nine-yard shotgun. Retreat under a massive West Monroe rush. Get away from the first defender. Toss it to the end zone. Touchdown! A 14-yard touchdown. Brent Rawls there to pull it in. Wow, outstanding. Yeah, but credit also Brock Berlin facing the heat. Again, rolled. He faced an all-out blitz and uh, rolled to his left, throw it across the ball. We need to see Glentrell Ware, among others. Lisso Jones really putting the heat on him through high and tall, and Brett Watt Rawls, if he was 6'4", would have made this catch. 6'5", frame stretches out with that 33-inch vertical jump, come down to the end zone for a touchdown. They're going for two. Rawls' second touchdown catch, and what a throw, too, that time by Berlin. Berlin beneath center. Double wing back, left side, Rodgers in motion. Berlin will drop, feel the pressure, unload, no good. Two-point conversion fails. The throw too weak for Thomas Bachman. And the Rebels will remain on top 14-12 with 1.22 remaining in the third quarter. We're looking at the back of Craig DeSoto and what Brock Berlin sees in this rush and cannot complete this pass for the two-point conversion. Lisso Jones again in his face. Airs it out too short. Oh, that's, this is a touchdown pass, and Brett Rawls comes down with it. Boy, what an outstanding effort by both of those fine athletes. Two-point West Monroe lead in this 5A matchup. This one going down to the wire as we're in the waning moments of the third quarter. Both these teams going for their fourth straight title. Curtis, earlier today, in the 4A final game, defeating Capital. They joined Faraday, which won four straight titles in 53, 54, 55, and 56, and Haynesville, which won four straight titles in 93, 94, 95, and 96. Curtis now, winner of four straight titles. In 96, 97, 98, and 99, one of these teams, Evangel or West Monroe, will join that elite company. Kickoff by the Eagles will come down. Brazil will take it at the five. Outside with some speed. Cuts it back at the 30. Loses the ball. It's kicked around. Who's got it? Still being fought over. West Monroe's ball. Wow. 23-yard return, but I think about eight players got a hand on that ball. At some point, I think it finally scored it out of bounds. Let's see. And a great return by Corey Brazil. Ball punched out. Uh, Bachman had an opportunity to grab it. Then you had a host of white jerseys. Finally, West Monroe just trying to knock it out the way. And it appears that finally, Demario Taylor may have saved the day for West Monroe by just touching it out. Boy, I tell you what, Bachman had a shot right here. And a couple more white jerseys. And watch number 21, Demario Taylor, will finally perhaps just bump it out of bounds. Didn't see with that gentleman blocking our view. Pilcher fakes it into the line. Whistles will stop this play dead. That was Edward Edward Dade in there, the sophomore, 5'6", 160. And here's where you miss a Tramesian Davis. Motion against the Rebels. That'll cost them five. Their fourth penalty. They've given up 30 yards in infractions. Coming in, too, in that play.
John Shallis discussing it with the official. Well, two fine defenses, Gerald, and two high-powered, high-octane offenses as well. And this is, again, everything that we thought it would be as Dennis Dunn discusses some options with Brock Berlin. Well, this West Monroe team, a, a recent dynasty, winning its first district title back in 1993. They've been tough to beat since that time. Now we've got a timeout on the field after a long official timeout. We'll take it as well. 108 left in the third quarter. It's a two-point West Monroe lead in this 5A state title game. It's first and 15 for West Monroe. The Rebels with two timeouts. The Eagles with one. So the Rebels taking that last timeout. Counter to the near side. Running room is Demario Taylor. A nine yard pickup for the young man. Would be second down. Might be the number, but he reminds me a little bit of, of an Eric Metcalf with that shifty zigzag action. And uh, Demario Taylor will be back for two more years. 148, five out of five, six frame, four touchdowns. And did a, an admirable job filling in for the injured from Miss Ann Davis. Pilcher rolls and will lose yardage. Couldn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Had some good blocks on the inside, but good pursuit. Tyler Satherweight there to help Pilcher to a four yard loss. Satterthwaite, one of those outstanding athletes as well. We talked, he's been a starter since his freshman year. Four-time all-district performer and also performed well for the Evangel baseball team as a third baseman. He'll, he's looking at Oklahoma, Texas A&M, University of Louisiana, and uh, which is USL and Louisiana Tech. And he'll make some on a fine catch, 6'2", 220, negotiates the 40 and 4'7". Well, that's the end of the third quarter here, Renee. We go into fourth quarter. This one, a 14-12 ball game. Uh, Outstanding game, a great way to finish up this five classification state championship tournament here at the Dome as the Rebels are on top of the Eagles. And I tell you, you were mentioning in the break, if Evangel's trailed this season, I'll bet you they haven't trailed in the fourth quarter. No, and it's it's uh, something very new to them and certainly not an insurmountable lead trailing by two points, but uh, Evangel has the high power. They just can't, can't seem to get on track in this game and credit the West Monroe defense with a lot to do with that, but they've dropped some passes that probably could have been some big plays and brought this game much closer. In fact, maybe giving the Eagles a lead, but you know, if candy and nuts, with, if, if, if it's butts with candy and nuts, you know? You look a little like Don Meredith too. You don't just sound like him. Pilcher overthrows his intended receiver. Ahmad Lewis there on defense, good defense. Brooks Greer right there, unable to come down with the ball. And it'll be fourth down. And Greer already has one touchdown to his credit. You mentioned Ahmad Lewis, brother Jelani Lewis, used to be a receiver here, now has moved on to Louisiana Tech. Does a great job, the junior, 5'8", 170, will be a fine addition to this defense as a senior next season. He'll come back with a few others, so the defense does return some starters. A shank of a punt, but it takes a big Rebel bounce. Mims Boyce probably had that ball go about 15 yards in the air and 20, 15 yards on the ground, a 34-yard punt. Thirty four yard punt. You know, West Monroe's offense returns uh, five starters Whitworth, Hank Hamilton, the center, uh, Adam Barfield, that's uh, three, and uh, make that more than that. Uh, uh, Demario Taylor and Tommy Banks, or Mark Banks, will return as well. So you got some, a nucleus of a good offense returning next year for West Monroe. Berlin 
We'll hand it off. Rogers, tough running straight ahead. He'll crack the 30 and get up to the 32 yard line. Seven yard pickup there. Rodgers can also catch out of that backfield, almost 500 yards receiving and a touchdown on the air to go along with his 1,063 yards. He's got 11 carries for 46 yards in this game. You know, with any other team, he would be a 2,000 plus rusher, but he just fits in here with their Eagles. Berlin unloads, ball complete to Bachman. Nine yard pickup. And it'll be a first down on the Bachman reception. Bachman coming into this game, 44 catches, 893 yards. That's a 20.3 yard average with nine touchdowns. Great elusive ability right here. Ducks away from two. The third one gets him, and that's Mims Boyce. Ducks on a tackle intended by Zach McVay and another here, but uh, can't get away from the third. Rodgers, counter inside. Will crack midfield and continue to motor. Look at him go. Inside the 40, still on his feet, down to the 35-yard line. Well, we told you, Gerald, that Nemi Rodgers has tremendous leg strength with that 600-pound squat. You're not going to knock him down or off balance. He's like a, a weeble wobble. You can knock him, not knock him around, but you can't knock him over. 24-yard pickup for Rodgers, and he was doing it with contact the entire way. Look at this, and he keeps those legs driving. That is not shoddy tackling. He is dragging. Glentrell Ware finally comes along with a couple of other would-be tacklers, Derek Fleming and company, and makes the stop on the gutty little performer, Nemi Rogers. Broke about four tackles here, if not more. Rogers again on the inside. He'll gain three. He relishes contact and a little undersized, but boy, he gives it everything he has. And he empties his bucket at the end of the game. He just, you know, everything he has is leaves on the field. And, and uh, that's this is one reason why Evangel has the success they have. Uh, the, the total commitment of all the players, and it starts at the top, which with uh, Denny Duran and Dennis Dunn. Credit Case Sanders with that last stop. Clock rolling inside of 10 minutes here in the fourth quarter. Berlin wants to go to the air. Flushed out of the pocket. Will look towards the end zone. It tipped. Had his receiver and also had a couple of West Monroe defenders closing. J.C. McKay was there. So was Ron McBeth. Looking for Thomas Bachman was Berlin. And Macbeth recognizes things as Berlin releases the ball and it's a double coverage. McKay and Macbeth was there as well. And McKay had a, got a hand on the ball, had not. It may have fallen, found its target. But it's all incomplete third down. So it'll be a third and six now from the 32. Berlin deep in the shotgun. Under pressure, complete. Right at the 20-yard line, that'll be a first down. Hermes with that catch in traffic. We talk about a tough catch, that's it right there. He threw it to a quintet of defenders and found his mark. I hit a thread the needle on that throw there, Gerald, and boy, Hermes came down with it and really, look at this, he throws it to a host of defenders and he hit it right on a mark, right between two defenders, and boy, he came down with it. Derek Fleming lured the boom on him, and that had to be a precision throw not one foot one way or the other. Had it been maybe one foot the other way, it may have been intercepted. It shows the kind of abilities that Rock Berlin possesses. Hermes will come out the game to take a blow for a couple of plays. It'll be first and 10 at the 20. Berlin beneath center. Right inside. Will crack midfield and continue to motor. Look at him go. Inside the 40, still on his feet. Down to the 35-yard line. Well, we told you, Gerald, that Nemi Rogers has tremendous leg strength with a 600-pound squat. You're not going to knock him down or off balance. He's like a, a weeble wobble. You can knock him, not knock him around, but you can't knock him over. 24-yard pickup for Rogers, 
and he was doing it with contact the entire way. Look at this, and he keeps those legs driving. That is not shoddy tackling. He is dragging. Glentrell Ware finally comes along with a couple of other would-be tacklers, Gary Fleming and company, and makes the stop on the gutty little performer, Nemi Rogers. Broke about four tackles here, if not more. Rogers again on the inside. He'll gain three. He relishes contact and a little undersized, but boy, he gives it everything he has. And he empties his bucket at the end of the game. He just, you know, everything he has is leaves on the field. And, and uh, that's this is one reason why Evangel has the success they have. Uh, the, the total commitment of all the players, and it starts at the top, which with uh, Denny Duran and Dennis Dunn. Credit Case Sanders with that last stop. Clock rolling inside of 10 minutes here in the fourth quarter. Berlin wants to go to the air. Flushed out of the pocket. Will look towards the end zone. It tipped. Had his receiver and also had a couple of West Monroe defenders closing. J.C. McKay was there. So was Ron McBeth. Looking for Thomas Bachman was Berlin. And Macbeth recognizes things as Berlin releases the ball and into double coverage. McKay and Macbeth was there as well. And McKay had a, got a hand on the ball, had not. It may have fallen, found its target. But it's all incomplete third down. So it'll be a third and six now from the 32. Berlin deep in the shotgun. Under pressure, complete. Right at the 20-yard line, that'll be a first down. Hermes with that catch in traffic. You talk about a tough catch, that's it right there. He threw it to a quintet of defenders and found his mark. I hit a thread the needle on that throw there, Gerald, and boy, Hermes came down with it and really, look at this, he throws it to a host of defenders and he hit it right on a mark, right between two defenders, and boy, he came down with it. Derek Fleming lured the boom on him, and that had to be a precision throw not one foot one way or the other. Had it been maybe one foot the other way, it may have been intercepted. It shows the kind of abilities that Rock Berlin possesses. Hermes will come out the game to take a blow for a couple of plays. It'll be first and 10 at the 20. Berlin beneath center. Rogers on the inside off the fake pitch. Stacked up at the 15, keeps his legs rolling. Going for the end zone, no. Pushed out of bounds at the two. An 18-yard run by Rodgers. Boy, he did it on his own. He just busted through the initial contact. And good, also very adept ball handling by Brock Berlin. A good fake here to Smith. Inside handoff to Rodgers. Breaks a tackle there. A couple of tackles from Macbeth. And finally knocked out of bounds by Corey Brazil, saving a touchdown. Look. Good contact right here. Gee, In fact, Willis. Fleming and Macbeth both really hit him pretty hard. And a, a touchdown saving tackle by Corey Brazil. And there's an injured player down for Evangel. It's like Wes Monroe down there, the, uh, the injured player. I take it back. You're correct. But when we return, Evangel... We turn back to action. Vandal's going to have it first and goal to West Monroe, two. It's Keith Thompson, once again, he's he must be having some shoulder difficulties because he's left the game on a couple of occasions. And, boy, this is just solid collision. Didn't wrap up, and that's what Coach Charles will say, but um, that was a heck of a determined run by Nehemiah Rogers. You know, you give Rock Berlin four shots now. Down is first and goal at the two-yard line, nine minutes to go. This game is far from being over, Gerald. Well, he's going to Bachman twice for touchdown catches. He's at the top. Or actually at the bottom, excuse me. He's going to Rawls for two touchdown passes. Rawls is at the top of the screen. They go to Rodgers here. Cracks in for the score. Nehemiah Rodgers with the two-yard touchdown score, and Evangel takes its first lead of this game. 
An eight-play, 75-yard drive. It's a four-point eagle bulge. I'm sure they'll go for two here with 9.04 left in the contest. And just a quick pitch to Rogers. Good blocking up front. Found a crease. Not enough surge from the defensive line. And uh, just gave him every advantage. Once he hits that that uh, yard line, that goal line, Gerald, he's, his uh, momentum is moving forward. He's, all he's doing is break the plane. Rogers, 93 yards on 15 carries. Here's the two-point conversion. They've had one fail already. Berlin will have another one. Into the corner of the end zone. I thought he was throwing that ball away, and it's complete. Where did Hermes come from? He had about a six-inch window where he could come down. I don't know how he came to the corner of the end zone, Gerald. I'll tell you what, what a throw by Brock Brohan. I thought Berlin was throwing it away. This is hours and hours and days of working on those sideline routes, and this is Brock Berlin with Justin Hermes. Watch, he tiptoes at the corner of the end zone. This is the touchdown by Nemi Rogers. But here's Brock Berlin as he rolls to his right with pressure coming from Boyce. Throws at the corner. Look at this, right at the, within a six inches or less of that sideline. That is hours and hours of training together, working together, knowing exactly where the throw is going to be and knowing uh, where his moves are. And boy, I tell you what, you just can't beat that. You only got to have one foot in. That's all he had. So the stage is set here. A six-point eagle lead with 9.04 left. Now the onus is on the West Monroe Rebels. I'd like to get a good kickoff return here. The special teams have helped them out tremendously. There's a pretty fan from up north cheering on Evangel. High kick. Wow, that, that return scares me. Brazil will return it. Now bounce it outside. Look out at the 25 and he's not going to run too far away from Geiger who was out there but that's a 25 yard return he concealed himself did Brazil behind the wedge and then popped it outside and gave West Monroe decent field position Geiger the only two-way performer for these Evangel Eagles and again he's the best player on the best team by some assessment in the country a 4-4-40 man and they call him the man. He's the best player, perhaps, to ever come through the system. He has recently committed, along with teammate Steve Lee, to the University of Texas and made a happy Mac Brown. First and ten. Pilcher and company. Hand off. Banks first back through. Nowhere to go. Check that. That was Edward Dade running that ball. Mike McFerrin there. So is Justin McIntyre. Is McFerrin. McFerrin, very emotional, was an offensive lineman in 1998. Good look at both headmasters right there. And team leader, uh, the teammates respond to McFerrin. And one of those seniors up front does a great job for coach Dennis Dunn and company. Back, Ronnie Alexander, the defensive coordinator. Pilcher's pass too strong. Greer could not come down with it. It'll be incomplete, and boom, just like that, it'll be third down. Well, if you're West Monroe, you don't want to give it back to Evangel on a three and out. We've still got plenty of football to play here with 8.14 left. You look at Landon Fleming right there, a 6'2", 260-pound senior. And it's time now for the, the Rebels to rally the troops and get out of this Wegmeyer, they're down at the own 27-yard line, 8.14 to go, Gerald. Big play needed here because Brock Berlin has caught fire and can move down a field if West Monroe can't convert this first down. Pilcher under pressure. He'll slip one tackle, but not a second. He will get positive yardage, but he'll be dropped well shy of the first down marker. It'll be fourth and five, and I'm sure West Monroe has no choice but to punt. It was a fire drill on Evangel's part defensively. Watch, they converge on him. All out blitz coming right here from the outside. Mac Farron is one defensive end, and Satterth Wade had just blitzed, came in from the outside, and he may have tripped him up and uh, prevented further damage to be done by Pilcher. Funny situation in Barté. They needed that first down. Yeah. 
Beautiful spiraling punt. Geiger will gather it in at the 30. Elude one tackler. Cut across the field and turn it up. Look out. Flag goes down. Geiger continues to fly down the far sidelines. He'll be dropped down at the five-yard line. A 64-yard return. But this one, in all likelihood, will be coming back. But it does show you what kind of explosive abilities that Geiger uh, does possess with that 4-4 speed. And, you know, not only is he great as a receiver running back and a defensive back, a kick return extraordinaire. That's come to come back, blocking a little waste, and it's going to be, uh, we don't have the number of the culprit, but uh, it's going to come back. not happy with it. It's going to, it's going to be a, uh, a fine play that mm, didn't see the culprit here. Ah, don't know. Oh, I tell you what, he looks like he's colliding. It's the ninth penalty for 80 yards against Evangel. They've had some big ones in this game. Then it's done. And Coach Don Schaus both have overcome some unbelievable obstacles as of to get him to this point. And six points are separating two tremendous teams here in the Superdome, the 5A Classic Championship game. Berlin beneath center. Three-step drop, flares it out, complete on the play. Bachman's there for a four-yard pickup. Evangel trying to wrap up a mythical national championship. They're ranked number one by Fox, number two by USA Today. Well, the attendance for tonight, 41,878. That's for all three games. That's a new record. Total attendance, 61,900. Today's attendance of 41,000 made better the Saints tomorrow. Hermes on the flare out. Will be dropped down. Whoa. After a minimal three yard pickup, Hermes spikes that ball as he gets up. I'm sure some pleasantries being exchanged between these two teams. Jared Frost pried the ball away, but he, I don't know that he didn't come up with that ball, Renee. He was ripping it out as they were coming down. Might have might have been down on the ground when he got it. Third and short. Rodgers, left side. Turn it up the field and will be very close to the first down. I'm not sure that he got it. It'll depend on the spot, and no, he is shy of the first down. Frost coming up from his defensive back position, slanting in as their number four right there. Outstanding job of closing, and he shut the door on the outside, came outside in, and boy, I tell you what, squared, squared his shoulders, forcing containment and uh, making him go inside, letting containment catch him. Pursuit did a great job. Fourth and inches. As we come down to the five minute mark, Evangel to go for it. There'll be a stoppage in play as Berlin will ask the official. Let's see. Now they'll put the ball in play. Don't know what the stoppage was for. But here we go. Berlin on the keeper. He'll be close. I think he got it. He should have gotten it, sir. He should have gotten it past the mark. And it will be a first down. That'll allow the Eagles to hold on to the ball.
clock rolling, 422. Evangel, I'm sure, would like to keep this ball on the ground. And they will. This play being strung out, Eddie Smith wrapped up. He will get back to the original line of scrimmage or close to it. But time the ally of the Eagles right now and not necessarily the, the down in distance. Extremely great pursuit abilities by all the West Monroe players, Macbeth, McVay, Fleming, Brazil, Glentrell Ware. Wow, it's just unbelievable how they converge. A sea of red engulfs the running back, and Eddie Smith just barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. Berlin retreats. Cox fires complete on the play. Gain of about seven. Bachman there. This Evangel team, the last five years, 69 and three on the field. West Monroe, 68 and five. As we come down to the three minute mark, still a 2014 lead. Here's a good look at Bachman right there. Evangel calls timeout. Well, that's their final timeout with 2.44 remaining. This will be a, an important third down conversion. The Eagles cling to a six point lead in this 5A Superdome Classic. Defensive looks on the faces say it all. This game's going down to the final seconds. Berlin for the game, 23 of 37, 226 yards, two touchdowns. Bachman, six catches, 78 yards. Hermes, seven catches, 79 yards. This could be a huge play in the outcome of this game. Third and four at the West Monroe, 48. Five wide receivers. Berlin in the deep shotgun. The drop back to the 39. Let it fly. It's complete. Clock will continue to run, and let's see where the spot is. He may have made the first down That's on the Bachman catch. on the reception. Let's see. It's close. It is close. He's got it. A sideline pass. It appears the nose of the ball may be edging beyond the first down marker. They're going to measure it. He's got it by half a football length. You don't want to take any chances here. You're right, Renee. First down for the Eagles. Chains will move, clock will continue to roll, and West Monroe needs to think about where to spend its two timeouts. Brock Berlin just rearing back Little sideline route there. As Berlin is now working with the first down the 44 yard line, 226 to go and West Monroe has all they can handle right now with trying to corral Brock Berlin and also uh, trying to regain possession and turn the ball back over to their offense. Run to the near side and staying in bounds is Eddie Smith. Eddie Smith the ball carried. And we've got a West Monroe player shaking up. That'll stop the clock inside of two minutes. Get you back to the workhorse and Eddie Smith. We mentioned it with 543 yards, averaging 6.9 yards per tote, breaking an initial contact right here and dragging a would-be tackler for about four yards, three yards, and that is an injured Lucas Jackson for West Monroe. That'll stop the clock with 159 left. Leading tackler on West Monroe's team, they can ill afford to do without any key player, and the final minute 59 seconds, the game may come down to that young man's arm. And if he can 
hold the ball long enough to eat up one minute 59 seconds and West Monroe does have some timeouts left. You know, I tell you what, in times like this, you see where he draws. His idol is war number seven, played for the Denver Broncos, John Elway. And he always it was the kind of guy to get the Denver Broncos out of a tough, tough jam. And Brock Berlin has certainly picked an ideal idol to follow in his footsteps. Berlin will come beneath center. Rodgers hit immediately and driven backwards. I'll tell you, Renee West Monroe's overcome a lot just to get here. He'll take a timeout and spend it here with 136 left. They lost 37 seniors from last year's state finalist squad. So obviously, they've got program status as they continue to bring new, fresh faces into the lineup. And how about Evangel? Their eighth, ninth great teams and their JV team this year undefeated. Yeah, I tell you what, it would serve uh, well for some of the schools down here to search the waiver wires when the cut time comes for those teams. You know, we talked about the lofty goals that Brock Berlin put in for himself. Philip Dees set a goal of 15 straight wins, and Brock Berlin exceeded that. Uh, 15 wasn't enough. He set a goal for a, a perfect 60 and 0 record. If the if the if record stays as it is, he will attain that goal with yet another state title. Of course, there were some forfeited games there for Evangel oh, that yes. would be pointed out. But on the field play, they would obtain a 60 and 0 record. And West Monroe is, is certainly a team that deserves to be here. And wow, that the fans want one more shot at this. Renee, this drive started with more than seven minutes remaining in the quarter. We've got 136 left now. The Eagles have held on to the ball. How about that for a passing team, a team known for what it can do through the air, is able to control this ball in the line of scrimmage. Another big third down. The Rebels down to one timeout, need to stop the Eagles here. Berlin beneath center drops back, scrambles, Fires incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. Okay, what do you do, Einstein? Pooch punted here to give West Monroe the entire field to work, or do you go for it on fourth no, down? No, you do not go for it. You pooch punt it. And uh, he almost came up with it. Zach McBay almost came up with that interception. Brock Berlin draw, drawing a beat on a receiver, and uh, you do not want to go for, for it here. And if anything, you're going to pooch punt it. May tell you, five-yard penalty wouldn't be surprised put themselves a little give better position to maybe get it kick it where it could fall inside the 10-yard line I wouldn't be surprised may not take a penalty but would be surprised if they did that 10 full seconds left on the play clock Stiegel high punt he's done his job angling for the sidelines and it goes out of bounds it goes up let's see as the official comes up they'll mark it right there at the 18-yard line so a 22-yard punt, and more importantly, the best number to give you right now is 82 yards. That's what stands between West Monroe and the end zone. They need nothing less than a touchdown to tie and an extra point to take the lead. 122 left in this contest. The Rebels have but one timeout. The Eagles have expired their allotment of timeouts. 53% passing completions for Chad Pilcher, 737 yards, 11 touchdowns. Two interceptions. It may come down to his shoulders right here. Look for Greer on a pattern. Pilcher throws under pressure and throws the ball away. Mitch Tucker. Check that. Mitch Tucker in there. That's not Pilcher quarterbacking this team right now. Now Tucker comes out and Pilcher goes back in. Mitch Tucker, 55%, seven, seven touchdowns, one interception. He's the underclassman, a junior, as McFerrin comes barreling in for the outside and put pressure on him and made him force that pass a little bit sooner than he anticipated. And Sabbath Wade and Tucker Hamilton. stays in there, Renee. He came to the sideline to get a play. Pilcher is in there as a wide receiver. He's at the bottom of your screen, the top receiver on the two receiver set. Tucker drops back. Feeling some pressure, he can run. 
He needs the sideline and will find it. Up to the 32-yard line. Clock will stop with 111. He's got three touchdowns to his credit. He's only run for 115 yards on the season, but Mitch Tucker can tuck it and go, and again, he'll be. He's the better thrower of the two. That's the reason he's in there right now, and he's the quarterback of the future. We'll be back for his senior year as Maxwell draws a beat on him. Wow, this has come down to 71 ticks here for the 5A state title. That's a minute 11, I believe. Wow. That Jesuit education is amazing. Okay, first and 10. Tucker from the shotgun. Stands tall, looks for Greer. He's bumped. Geiger comes up with the interception. Here comes Geiger back the other way, and this could ice it for Evangel. The celebration ensues on the far side. It may be Shreveport celebrating tonight and not Monroe in North Louisiana. Well, you can bet West Monroe's going to be going for this ball, so the least amount of ball handling, Brock Berlin. Well, they could start kneeing the ball down. West Monroe could only stop the clock once. As this was, should ice the game. He was looking for Greer on a streak route, and uh, perhaps they detected a face mask. Face mask as Tucker defense, just aired it out. And, touchdown. you know, I tell you what, good defensive play as, as uh, down the field, number five impeded his route and kept him off, off course a little bit and did an outstanding job. Jonathan Wade did a good job as sophomore defensive back and had a lot to do with that interception for Giger. And this is what Berlin's going to do. Face mask penalty on that. And gee whiz, I think he fumbled that ball, huh? Did he fumble that exchange? West Monroe says they have it. He was trying to kneel it down, was Berlin. They're down at the 35 because of a face mask call on the return on Geiger. It'll be second down. West Monroe's got a timeout. The clock continues to spin inside of 40 seconds. It'll be second down. And I'd like to see that play again. He did indeed fumble it. Brock Berlin just once kneeled down away from a, a perhaps what may be a national title to go home with the state championship here. Well, he'll kneel it down again. Frustrations abound. We'll see if West Monroe will stop the clock. And they choose not to stop the clock and not force Evangel to snap it again. And there's your state champion, a fourth consecutive year. Well, Renee, they've done it in single A twice. They've done it in 3A three times. And now their first year in 5A, they do it. The Evangel Eagles from Shreveport are your 5A state champions. Thanks to a 2014 win over the West Monroe Rebels, they become the second team to win three state championships in three different classifications. The other team, the John Curtis Patriots. Let's bring it down to the field for the trophy presentation.
The Louisiana High School Athletic Association would like to thank State Farm Insurance and its Louisiana agents for sponsoring all state championship trophies and awards. Representing State Farm at midfield, State Farm agent Robert Cook of West Monroe, State Farm agent Jim Mitchell of Lake Charles, State Farm Agency Field Consultant Rick Fitz of Lake Charles. State Farm Agent Don Ashworth of Shreveport. State Farm Agent Ben Tullis of Shreveport. State Farm Agent Tag Rome of Bossier City. And State Farm Agent Larry Poole of Bossier City. Also at midfield, representing your Southern Quality Ford dealers, Mr. Greg Waddell and Mr. David Moore of Hickson Autoplex of Monroe. They are accompanied by Ms. Sherry Henry, Louisiana Educational Representative for the Gatorade Company. The first award, presented by State Farm Agent Robert Cook of West Monroe, is the 1999 Class 5A State Runner-Up Trophy. He's assisted by Mr. Rick Fitz. The award goes to West Monroe High School. Don Child, Principal, Buddy Reed. The next award is the State Farm Outstanding Player for West Monroe High School, as selected by the working media. It is presented by State Farm Agent Jim Mitchell, and it goes to number 41, Corey Brazil.
Evangel wins its fourth consecutive state title, this time in Class 5A. West Monroe falls short, 20 to 14, a final count. Renee, very rarely does a state championship game live up the pregame hype. I would say this one today did live up to the pregame hype. This was everything we thought it would be, Gerald, and an outstanding game by both teams. You hate to see any team, either team, go home with the loss. Uh, there was no loser today, just a team that finished a little shy of the winner. Brock Berlin, once again, what an outstanding game. He had Brett Rawls, the backup quarterback you mentioned. He'll be in playing next year, but he had two big touchdown receptions in this game, part of the difference. And also, Evangel's running game, which made a big difference in this game. Nemai Rogers, the key guy there, and they were able to keep it in that fourth quarter, keep it away from West Monroe until there was hardly any time left in the contest. You know, we talked about how multi-dimensional Evangel has become, and Eddie Smith and Nemai Rogers has really proven that, and Nemai Rogers, very valuable, running the ball in Brock Berlin. What an outstanding game he had, and, and I tell you, they deserve, with a 60-game winning streak on the field, to be the number one team in the nation. Well, it's elite company. Evangel has entered only three of